Hey guys, welcome to another episode of FinTech Brews. This is going to be a fun one. I'm Nikki Rohde along with Eric Cotton. What's up? <laughs> and today we are with a really special guest that is a partner of Central Payments, Wayne, CEO of Gift of College. Wayne, will you introduce yourself? Hi, Nikki. Hi, Eric. Great to, great to be here. I'm Wayne Weber. I'm the founder and CEO of Gift of College, a company that helps Americans save and pay for higher education. So awesome. I, you know, Central Payments does a lot of different product lines and, and helps solve needs for, for folks. And I think Gift of College is maybe one of the most unique ones uh, that we've had the pleasure of partnering with you on. So I would love if you would tell the audience a little bit about Gift of College, um, say more about what it is that you do. Sure. Yeah. So um, like I said, we help uh, families save and pay for education. And, you know, we started off just as really a gift company. We were, I, you know, I wandered into a toy store one day and I was shopping for my uh, nieces and nephews. And I, I don't know what hit me. I just felt like everything's going to end up in a garage sale. Um, so that day I quickly went from cool uncle to not so cool uncle and decided <laughs> You know, maybe maybe toys and things are out the window. Um, and I learned that day what a 529 college savings plan was, which I found out that's actually what my whole career has been about now. There's uh, a really a, a lack of awareness on how to save and pay for college and what these 529 college savings plans are. But simply put, I, I found out that my nieces and nephews, some of them were saving for college. And in one of these 529 college savings plans, I went to gift to one. And it was really hard. Um, so I started a company out of it really personal. It was, this is difficult. You know, there's baby registries out there. There's wedding registries. Why isn't there an education savings registry? So that's what we built. Yeah. Gift of College launched as the first ever uh, gift registry for your 529 and student loan account. That obviously lets friends and, and family, you know, contribute. Well, as a mother of three, I can attest to all the toys and gifts and stuff that fills our homes and our closets. And there is a tipping point where you stop wanting all of that for your kids um, and want something that's more lasting. And so, and I would also contend that this idea of how you founded this company coming from a place of personal recognition and is, is passionate. And that's what keeps us going. I mean, you've been at this a while because of all the bureaucracy of, of five, two nines and state laws and all that stuff. Do you want to share a little bit about that journey and, and yeah. maybe how difficult it's been and that will make the fruit of this so much greater. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, when you launch technology and innovations, it, you you know, especially as an entrepreneur, and I wasn't an entrepreneur. I was in sales, selling software and hardware before this. I didn't know I was going to be an entrepreneur. So the personal aspect is what caused that, right? Um, I became an entrepreneur because I was working on something that I believed in for, for my own family. But you also think, wow, this is such a cool no-brainer idea. And then you bring it to a market. And it's not always met like right away with, with instant, come on in, you know, um, especially if it is a 529s are sponsored. It's a it, 529 is federal tax code. It means you save in a tax advantage way uh, for future college expenses. Um, when, when governments are involved and they're state sponsored, yeah, there's just a lot of parties involved. So it took years for gift of college really to socialize our technologies and what we were building um, with that industry. But I'm really proud of, of where we've gotten because, you know, today, um, and we'll talk about, you know, I'm sure some of the products that we have and some of the things we're doing, but yeah, the, years later, here we are um, from a company that started, you know, in a toy store really to, um, you know, somewhere where we uh, have an opportunity really to make a big impact, but it took a while to get there. So I, I'm excited that we've socialized it and, and we're starting to really work some meaningful relationships with, with the 529 industry. That's amazing. Perfect. Well, you're pioneering a lot. So um, congratulations on that. Yeah. And I, I think, Wayne, why don't we lean into a little bit? You just brought up, you know, kind of how, how you broke into the industry. How do you identify the partnerships? I know that obviously there's, there's governments, there's, you know, local state governments. How do you 
how do you identify partners that you're going to work to help distribute your product? And, and maybe if you want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some that you're in market or going to market with, I think that'd be interesting as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we learned early on that there were multiple parties in, in 529. There's, there's often a state uh, or there's always a state, a state uh, that sponsors the 529. And then there's often uh, a program manager, a program manager, a, a private sector firm um, that helps manage the investment, helps manage the program, helps manage the record keeping and things like that. Um, so we've worked with both over the years. We've worked with uh, states where we've introduced gift of college gifting. Um, that was the start of it. We started as, again, all gifting. And it was that gift online in the gift registry. But then it expanded. We Our second first was the first ever uh, gift cards. So we have gift of college gift cards that can be redeemed into any 529 or any student loan account. Um, we put those into many retailers, but yeah, we have 529s now, like Virginia 529, for example, one of the nation's leading 529 plans that promote uh, their 529 brand on our gift cards at retail. So they're they're promoting their 529 uh, brand in CVS stores, for example. Um, so it was really identifying where can we build products, technology, and innovations that would make an impact um, with the 529 industry. We found several, sev several ways. The gifting was just one of them. Um, and we'll get into like the future of what we're doing and all that. But the industry was looking, how do we interact with employers? Um, how is there other dollars out there? We'll talk today about some new partnerships we have with firms like Fisher Price, with the Fisher Price College Savings MasterCard which is a card that earns 2% cash back. And my firm helps get those dollars into 529 plans. So building that, that technology and those innovations, Eric, was really the, the how to we partner and how do we identify um, individuals and firms within the, in, in the college savings industry that we can partner with. First, bring value, you know, make, make gifting enhancements, which, with, which we've done make it easy for employers to engage in employee benefits, make it easy for payments to go to these sort of plans. Once we started building those products, um, we identified the state 529 plans, and that's typically who we talk to first. Um, we talk to uh, the 529 plan leadership at the state, which is typically out of the treasurer's office, uh, state treasurer. Um, and at this point, I think in the products we're doing with you, which we'll talk about today, they're valuable to everybody. So that's the cool part is the tech, whether it's gifting into a, a college savings plan, your credit card reward going into a college savings plan, using a card to pay out of your college savings plan. Every one of these plan providers need these sort of products. So um, the identifying, once we've built the products, we realized it's a pretty wide market that, that can use the fin financial technology solutions we're bringing. And why don't we elaborate on that? You know, since you touched on it, Wayne, obviously one of the, one of the things I love personally about, you know, working at central payments and being in the payment space is just how diverse the use case for payments is, you know, this being a, a great example of how, how payments and the movement of funds, you know, can, can help solve a lot of problems. So, um, why don't you give, give everyone an overview of, of the product, you know, that we've partnered on relating to how it works and, and what problems it's solving. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, leading up to this, everything gift of college worked on was money into a college savings plan or paying down a student loan account. So gift, employer, rewards, philanthropy, all those funnels in the industry though, the 529 industry there has never been a focus on helping people access their funds to take the money out. So, right, Nick, you talked about your three little ones. You're going to save for all these years. You're going to hit a point where they become students and they go off to college. And you then have to access your funds that you've been saving in this 529 all these years. That has never been made easy. That's the cool part about all this and our work together is we again identified simple financial technology. Let's face it, like they're getting really technical and fancy, but prepaid cards have been around a long time. 
um, health savings accounts have used them for how many years? So the fact that we have a $500 billion industry, the 529 industry has just under $500 billion saved in it. And there's no easy way to access those funds. So um, that's our partnership, Eric, and one I'm super proud about um, partnering up with, you know, I consider us one of the leaders in payments and gifting and payments in the 529 industry. Um, ICU is one of the leaders in prepaid. Um, so to merge those two things together, I think is a, is a pretty cool mashup. So together, uh, what Gift of College and Central Payments have developed is really one of the first ever uh, access cards that ties directly to your 529 account. So until today, um, Nikki's kiddos would go off to college. She'd go, oh my gosh, tuition's due. And she'd scramble and she'd probably pick up the phone causing a customer service inquiry to the 529. How do I even access these dollars? And then she's going to find out she's probably going to have to get reimbursed because her tuition's due. Kids and then she's going to get frustrated and start mm -hmm. cussing and yes. what, you know, there's possibility. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we fixed a big problem. I think, I think we've made it. So, uh, your five, two, nine plan, when you go to take a withdrawal, instead of just having a check cut often as a reimbursement for expenses you've already incurred, um, to your checking or savings, or, or maybe an ACH to your checking account, um, you could act, actually have those dollars land on our new My529, which is Utah's 529 plan. We'll get to that. But uh, the Utah My529 access card is first in the nation uh, with our firms, right? That uh, uh, give literally hundreds of thousands of Utah 529 savers that have saved billions of dollars now have quick, easy access uh, to their $529 for expenses when they come up. Um, so that's something we all should be really proud of, I think, because, you know, we, hey, we built something. <laughs> it's incredible. And I think, honestly, your passion and commitment to greatness to solve the problem, and you kept, you've used the word easy a few times, which is seeing that it should be easy. It should be easier than it is. And it's right. complicated. And even payments in general, the all the different touch points and the anatomy and the pipes and the legislation and regulation and everything else, it's hard and it's complicated. And so your pursuit for easy solutions for a customer um, is really remarkable. And I think that's what's gonna make this product so successful is the way that it has been structured to be easy for the consumer um, is is incredible. So I, I congratulate you on that. Visualizing um, member, you know, folks listening to this that have gone through the, you know, capturing a receipt, trying to, you know, fax it in, email uh, it in, the image, you know, so their funds aren't dispersed. I just think about people as they're as they're hearing, you know, what Wayne has built, just kind of a breath of shaking their head well if they've gone through the process like where was this you know wish i had it yeah. exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> yep that's exactly right so wayne thinking about what's next for gift of college in this season what are you focused on right now for a next step yeah wow we have our hands in in so much obviously um the gifting we're going into the holiday season um so you have lots and lots of gifts happening um, we've just entered this reward space where the first ever credit cards can now put money into 529s and student loans through our platform. We have tons going on with philanthropy. So we have dozens of organizations that give their scholarships away on Gift of College's platform. One of my favorites was Fifth Third Bank, who every May 3rd gives away uh, new babies being born in a particular city or two, last year was two cities, every baby gets a $1,053 gift of college gift card. So we have that going on. We have dozens of employers signing on to our platform, um, doing payroll deduction, matching, gift cards for new babies, gift cards for talent acquisition and retainment, rewards and recognition. But you know what? It, the timing couldn't, could not be better. Um, 529 doesn't have the focus, but student loan does. We hear about student loan every day in the news. Um, and we're at a point now where payment and interest pauses 
are ending. Um, payments are restarting for millions and millions of Americans. Um, and it's going to be just a huge, huge burden. Um, so employers have gone from a, a student loan assistance benefit is an, is a want to now it's sort of becoming a need. Um, and actually on our platform, uh, prior, uh, uh, last month, year over year, um, our student loan contributions on our platform are up 1,400%. And that was because everyone was sitting, not making their payments. And now they're in a rush, hurry up and make my payments before September 1st, when all the interest starts to accrue again. So we're, we're in a critical time, which I would highlight, um, yeah, we need to address student loan debt, whether you're doing it with payments through your credit card rewards or your employer. But 529 is the key to all of this. Because if we're not saving a way ahead of time to avoid all this debt, does anyone on this podcast think college is going to be cheaper in 18 years? Not a chance. Do, so how do, you, how do you think you motivate people to do that, Wayne, in a, in a culture broadly of the here and now instant gratification, how do you continue to socialize the importance of the future, recognizing that and getting people to act accordingly? Yeah, great question. I, th I think awareness is the key. We become aware of how to save for retirement. We go into a workplace, our employer sits us down and says, hey, do you ever hear of a 401k? And they tell us all about that. It's one of the first things our employer, our first job out of college, right? Does anyone tell us how to pay off our student loan debt? And does anyone tell us how to save for, what if, what if it's our own education? What if we're going on to get our MBA or another degree or continuing education or our kids or years later, our grandkids? No one gives us this awareness. So I think bringing that awareness through payments, our industry, right? You can bring awareness to 529 through the payments industry around rewards. You could bring awareness to 529 college savings plans through the payments industry of disbursements, through the payments industry of disbursements from scholarship dollars, employers. So um, I, think, I think that's the way we do it. Um, it is going to be, a, it, it takes a village kind of thing. So I think our, our employers need to adopt it as a mainstream benefit. Um, and we will start to interact with it because the folks that turn it on to payroll, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's a little bit out of your paycheck. Next thing you know, 15 years has gone by and you have a substantial amount of money for college, even if you were only saving $25 out of each paycheck. Um, so that, that piece, I think, is where uh, we can make the biggest impact. Getting employers involved, everything else is an ancillary benefit. Employers should introduce this to Americans, and then we should have all the tools we want, whether it's hooking up our, our spending mechanisms for rewards or, you know, whatever it may be, gifts, aligning gifts. Um, but that's how we're going to do it. It needs to start with awareness. We need to make sure Americans know what a 529 is just as, as, as much as they know what a 401k is. I, I think that is an important first step, and that first step may start a lot earlier too, right? Like we need to, to start this with the kids. So we're starting to see around the nation call, uh, um, children's savings accounts pop up. Um, a very popular program, New York Kids uh, Rise in New York City, in which every every kindergartner is getting a, a 529 established for them. Um, those sort of automatic things that can bring awareness and then employers that can double down. That's where I think we'll make the largest impact. So if an employer was listening here and they said, you know what, I'm sold, I want to do that, what, what would be the right way to get in touch with you to discuss more or your team? Sure. Yeah, they can reach out directly to us. Um, heck, they could reach out directly to me. <laughs> I'm Wayne at giftofcollege.com. Um, and we would get you in touch with the right people. But we engage with employers every single day. We lead with education. So we bring education on 529 plans, 529 ABLE plans, student loan assistance, resources and how to access those plans and, and information about those plans, and then a way to take action with them. And that way is we hook up to the payroll system, payroll deduction and matching, just like 401k. 
Um, and then we have our very cool gift cards, which I, I say they're cool because I, I don't like to knock um, all the restaurants I like to dine at, but we have a super unique gift card, right? It's not a restaurant. It's, it's not gaming, right? It, it's a financial impact in your life. So seeing those, seeing newborns, that's my, that, that's the goosebump thing when an organization, all of a sudden every newborn or adopted family member gets seated a college savings plan. That's the magic in all this. That's incredible. How, how do if a employer goes, ah, we already offered tuition reimbursement. What's your rebuttal to that on how this would be different yeah. and better? Yeah. You know, um, I, I see it all bundled actually. So I, I'm a huge believer in, especially with financial technologies, meeting people where they are. So for, Unfortunately, with tuition reimbursement, it's a small percentage of employees that take firms up on it. It's typically 2% or so. So that's okay, though. You're meeting 2% of your employees where they are. They're you know, going after an MBA or whatever it might be. Um, but then you also have a huge percentage that are weighed down by student loan debt. And then you have a huge percentage that paid for their student loan. And maybe they have a grandchild or a child that they might want to save. For, for future expenses. So I say that tuition reimbursement, it actually fits all, all into this bigger picture. And something that's really interesting, which a lot of people don't know still, uh, in 2020, the CARES Act had a provision in it that allowed for, it was an expansion of tuition reimbursement. So tuition reimbursement at a company, you at Central Payments, for example, if you wanted to, you could give your employees up to $5,250 a year towards their tuition, ongoing tuition, tax-free to you, and it's tax-free to the employee. In 2020, that was expanded to student loans. So now any company that you mentioned, Nikki, said, well, I do tuition reimbursement. You can enhance that program and use the same exact you know, program that you use called an IRC 127, and you can amend that to include student loan, not just tuition. Their next rebuttal will be, well, what about participation rate? And I'm smiling because it won't be 2%. Um, we have this in market. We, we have an employer with 37% participation rate in a student loan benefit. Wow. So Wow. That's incredible. And yeah. that's where the results happen. And I have to contend, maybe you know this, but retention of employees for that um, employer has got to be really high. Net promoter score, really high. We have to believe that, and and we are going to work to to make sure we gather data around it. But um, if you're helping me pay down my student loan, or you're helping my son or daughter or grandchild save for education, I'm I probably have a, a different relationship with my employer. Yeah. Um, that's that's pretty powerful. So yeah, I think so. And then the, back to the cards too. We have employers that um, signing bonuses on student loans coming in the door. Um, talk about, you know, that's a future retention. Hey, the first thing my employer did was help me with my student loan account. Holy cow. Um, so yeah, very, very, very cool opportunities, I think, um, to differentiate yourself as an employer. And I think it will impact uh, uh, talent acquisition and retention. When we think about the, maybe you want to spend a, a moment talking about the process that parents and students would go through on, for example, the the My529 for Utah that Central Payments and Gift of College yeah. is partnering up on. What is that process for parents and students? So I think that's the biggest thing we're addressing is, is we're, we're bringing something to them as a tool for the first time. Um, so I, I kind of talked about that old process where you save all those years and you scramble and freak out and call your 529 and say, how do I get my money? And most likely your tuition payment's already due. So you've already written a check. Um, the, the new process is you're introduced to a new My529 Discover access card that allows you to apply for it right on Utah, uh, their My529 website. So whether you're logged into the website at My529 or you're on the withdrawal page where you go to take your withdrawal, it's shared with you that this new product exists. You're able to apply for it. Your application is instant and it immediately connects to your 529 plan once you've applied. So that means the next time that you log in or go to take a withdrawal, 
you can instead of have it directed as a check coming to you or maybe a check to your university um, or an ACH, you can say, I would like $1,000 put onto my 529 uh, access card um, because I know my kiddo has books due next week and I know that uh, he's got some groceries he's going to buy. Um, we also built, put bill pay in it, which is so cool because I also know that the electric bill is due on his off-campus living next month. Easy way to make that payment. So um, we've really, I, I, easy, I keep saying the word easy, but that that's what's happened here. We, we've kind of made the process. The process is simple. And then the student, the student has a shared card. So until now, the student had no access to $529. They don't have access to take money out of the 529, but they really had no payment mechanism. So there was no financial education or responsibility being taught. Um, they weren't involved in the process. It all rode on the parent. And then when the student was involved, hey, kiddo, make sure you save your receipt. How's that? Yeah, work? right. Yeah, right. I was going to say, I think the responsibility thing is a really, really important attribute because teaching the, it's the whole give a fish, teach a man how to fish kind of thing. Like if they're not learning how to manage those, it, those expenses or understand what that means to spend this money and how much is left or having to call mom or dad or grandma or grandpa it's it's a different ball game when they have responsibility and access and so uh, well done on on making that a part of the process we want them part from the beginning i would say so there's there's data out of washington university uh that says a child is many times more likely to attend and graduate college just by knowing they have money set aside for them for college um, so I suggest getting them involved in the process the whole way along, but this end part with this card, I mean, that's the, that's the big responsibility. You're walking around with enough money to pay your, possibly your tuition. Um, so it's obviously up to the parents and you got to know your kid. Um, but it does give some great, great teaching and financial responsibility along with it too. That's so I think awesome. it also ties it all together too. I mean, just for future saving for anything, if a, a, if a student's aware that, oh, my parents put $20 per paycheck and now I have all of these funds that, you know, aren't going to be a, an immediate impactful burden on my family having to pull, you know, $2,000 for books. It's because my, my parents, grandparents, whomever had the, had the foresight to, you know, put a little bit at a time. And now I have this this mechanism, um, I think that just, just the, sh the, the mental shift there is, is very powerful. Yeah. And that mechanism, by the way, as we all know, it's branded on your plastic card or in your Apple wallet, right? That mechanism should be the reminder of how the, all this happened. So this end card product we have, when you're at the student bookstore, that should be a reminder. Family saved all this money. My 529 plan out of Utah, branded on the card, was the vehicle to do this. The bookstore clerk, what's that? This, this should be, again, another awareness opportunity, but that should be the reminder of this all happened, this payment's happening because of all this previous work and savings. You mentioned one thing earlier that I want to hit on. You talked about Fisher Price, and I smiled because... This whole thing starting of you being in a toy store and now Fisher Price has gotten involved. How did that come to be and how happy did that make you? Yeah, you know, it made me thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, launching the company in a toy store is, I, I would have never done, if I didn't wander into that Toys R Us that day, I would have, I would have never started my company. So that's an interesting component to it. I am, I'm proud to work, be the tech solution to help Fisher Price. Um, their card issuer uh, found us in a pursuit of how do we build a everyday spending card that can align with those rewards with higher education savings. So we, we, we looked like a good fit for them um, to help with that because we connect to every 529 in the nation. Um, but I'm so proud because it's a toy company, right? And, and they want to bring education around how you can pursue education. And it might even be 
I, you know, I, if they hear this, you know, if they hear this to them, though, it might even be at the cost of a toy. You know, they're promoting putting money in a five two nine plan. Um, I, I couldn't be more proud um, that Fisher Price is, is the brand to step forward with aligning with college savings. Um, I haven't seen any other brands that are outside of the financial industry and tied to, you know, five, two nines in a, you know, a business capacity. Um, I haven't seen another brand really step up to the five, two nine industry like that. And the fact that it was Fisher price is, it's just hard. It's so cool. It That's is. so cool. It is perfect. And as we, uh, approach a close here, Wayne, I'd love for you to elaborate just a little bit more about what, what's in the future for gift of college. What are you thoughts running through your mind? Product offerings. Obviously there's so many different directions you can go. Yeah. Um, but, but what does the next six months or so look like for, for you and for gift of college? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Eric, um, I promise that for now, for at least six months, I've stopped making products. Um, my my uh, stakeholders, um, our team, um, our marketing budgets. Um, <laughs> we have five product lines, right? We have we have a gifting product line, we have a rewards product line, we have an employer product line, we have a nonprofit product line, and now we have a disbursement product line with you. Um, that's our future, though. We we need to identify where are the best places to spend our energy out of those five product lines to get as many people either paying down their debt or saving to avoid it as possible. So this has been for me like a dozen year run of building and building and building and building. And now May was the Fisher price thing. We have another credit card that's launching on October 5th uh, with us that we're powering the rewards. We've onboarded more employers in the past two months than we have all, all along. Um, so it, it's all starting to, it's all starting to catch. So our next six months are making sure that uh, our products reach the right people in the right market. Um, and it's hard because it's a lot of people. The good news is one of our product lines, the disbursement card with you, it's not a lot. You know, there's only 93 direct and advisor sold 529 plans managed by a couple handfuls of entities. Um, so that's something I think we're going to work on really, really hard um, is making sure that every 529 plan out there knows um, there's a new way to access your 529 dollars, just like Utah, who's leading, leading the nation with this technology just like they're doing. So we want to make sure that others know that exists too. Well, we we wish you uh, the best of luck in all that. Uh, that's a lot to take on and for your team, but I think your continued pursuit for making it easy, making it accessible, driving awareness. I hope that this episode helps drive some more awareness, even incrementally. And, you know, we're excited to be partnered with you for the disbursement card and then Utah moving into the next state and the next state and the next state and the next state. So thank you so much for joining us, sharing a little bit about your story. And I say, here's to, uh, here's to your success. Thank you so much, Nikki. And thank you so much, Eric. Yeah. Thank you very much, Wayne. This was, uh, I'm sure, uh, will motivate some folks that maybe need to, uh, hopefully dive into some of your products, but I think it, you're going to have people thinking about, uh, the future for sure. So uh, we appreciate uh, you being so gracious with your time. Thanks again. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers.